You are using it medically because we live in a sick society. And we need to insulate ourselves from that sick society before it leaches in and gets us. It's all about having your pot pride again. If you smoke, you're not doing anything wrong. If you're saving your seeds, you're saving the seed that could save the planet. You are part of a millennia long tradition of the safe and effective use of a plant before they ever knew what oil was. Oil is going to destroy our country. Oil has already destroyed the country of Iraq. Oil is going to destroy countries in the Middle Eastern domino syndrome unless we stop using oil. And we can with a plant. So legalize energy farming. I think it's a shame that John Kerry didn't know what to say about energy farming and allowed George Bush to say biodiesel before he could. I was shocked. The oil companies have the power to change our system from oil to hemp overnight. They won't do it. The refineries that they feed with crude oil could be fed with corn stalks or any kind of natural biomass material. But they just have to use it that way. And they don't want to use it that way. They will have us addicted to oil until the last tree is felled and the last drop of oil is drained from the ground. I say no to that. I say no to the lies. I say no to the plastic society. Everything you look at now is plastic. Even I have to use plastic here. It's insane. Where's the canvas? Oh, it's really expensive because we have to import it. Why can't American farmers grow this stuff? In South Dakota, the Native Americans grow hemp on their reservation legally. In North Dakota, it's legal for American farmers to do the same, but they're afraid. So we got to say no to fear. And having your pot pride makes the fear go away. People stigmatize you. They say you're on drugs if you smoke pot. They love to send the D.A.R.E. program into our schools because they will dare to lie to our children about pot. They tell our children that if you smoke pot, you're on drugs. So a kid thinks, if I'm on drugs already, what's the difference if I take cocaine or heroin or these pills? But there's a big difference, and they won't tell you. So here at Liberation Day, I will tell you the difference between pot and hard drugs. We have organizations out there, and they're very organized, I'm sure, but they think the movement is about showing up for one hour like it's a doctor's appointment, and you show up, and you go rah, rah, rah at the state capitol or someplace, and then you go home and you're done. No, 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 no. Activism is an all-day thing. Some people didn't want to come out because it was raining. No, no, no. Activism is an all-weather thing. Some people say, oh, well, we can do this thing in baby steps. We can do medical one year, maybe do industrial next year, and then maybe we'll actually solve the problem and deal with our recreational pot. I say, no, no, no. Sure, activism is an all-time thing, but that doesn't mean that we have to be doing this forever. We have to demand the removal of all criminal penalties for any use of cannabis. The best uses of cannabis are only denied because of the recreational use. That is the excuse that they use. So if we have to deal with any law, we have to deal with the recreational use. we got to say, hey... I'm not ashamed. I'm proud that I've chosen pot as my drug of choice because I know that not a single person has ever overdosed on pot. Not a single person has ever gotten lung cancer from pot. And you'd think there'd be millions of cases. You'd think that people would be dropping like flies in Jamaica. Bob Marley didn't die of lung cancer. Bob Marley didn't get emphysema. And I expect that I probably won't either, because pot is the anti-drug. 
pot is not the gateway drug, it's the gatekeeper. Most people who smoke pot do not go on to become addicted to other drugs, even if they try other drugs. And some people who do get addicted find their way back by smoking medical cannabis. If you have enough pot, you don't need anything else. We could solve the drug problem just by legalizing pot and leave the rest of the laws in place. Now, that sounds kind of cruel. Yeah, people are rotting in jail right now for hard drugs. Well, that didn't have to happen. There's an antidote to hard drugs, and they won't let us use it. There's an antidote that not only proves that addiction can be stopped, it also proves that pot isn't addictive. The research that told us about melatonin, which is the number one neurotransmitter that you release when you smoke pot, that research came out of the Ibogaine research. So anyone who thinks that they're in the pot movement that has a problem with Ibogaine is an ungrateful punk. Because Ibogaine gave them the gift of this knowledge and they don't know what to do with it. But cures not war, does. There was an ad that said, oh, pot's more like heroin than you used to think. And Normal tried to respond to that ad. But Normal refuses to use the Ibogaine rhetoric. And so they weren't able to respond to that ad. But we do. We say, no, it's not addictive. Yes, it can get you out of addiction. And yes, it can prevent you from getting addicted in the first place. Because once you try it, nothing else compares. So as long as we can solve the recreational pot issue, we can get our freedom. Anything short of that is compromising with the devil.